In this second video, we will discuss how to build and interpret response spectra. Now, the main concept of a response spectrum is summarized by the equation, as well as the image on the right. Now, let's start with the equation. D is what we call our displacement response spectrum because it is defined in terms of the displacement response U. Now this displacement response U is of course a function of time, T, but it is also implicitly a function of the natural period and the damping of the system. When we take the maximum absolute value of this response to obtain D, we eliminate the influence of time, and so our displacement response spectrum is ultimately a function of the natural period and the damping of the system. Now let's look at how this is built. We start from a ground motion record. In this case, we'll use El Centro again. Using a numerical method, most of the time Newmark, we obtain the response for a set of natural periods and damping values. Now in this illustration, we are limiting ourselves to three cases, but in a realistic scenario, we would look at a much larger range of values. So in the case of natural period, we might look at every 0.1 seconds. In the case of damping, we might look at specific values in the range of zero to 20%. It is generally not necessary to have super fine resolution in terms of damping. Now going back to the simulated responses, for each time history response, we will take simply the maximum absolute value, which is shown by the circle. And then we will plot that value at the corresponding value for the period. So 2.67, goes at 0.5, 5.97 goes at a period of 1, and 7.47 is plotted for a period of 2. And obviously we simulate more cases to fill in the spaces in between. And so this line now corresponds to a zeta equal to 2% and we could plot new curves for different values of damping as well. Now each displacement response spectrum D has a corresponding pseudo velocity spectrum V and a pseudo acceleration response spectrum A. And these can be obtained directly from the values of D by multiplying by the corresponding natural frequency. You might recall that for pseudo acceleration, we obtained this from the equivalent static force discussion. Now these spectra do not present any new information. However, they are convenient ways of visualizing different aspects of the response. We know, of course, that D corresponds to the maximum displacement of our structure. V, V is related to the maximum strain energy in our system. And pseudo acceleration is proportional to our maximum base shear, which again, we brought up in the equivalent static force discussion. Notice that we are overloading the V a little bit V sub B corresponds to base shear, where V alone corresponds to pseudo velocity. The not subscript corresponds to a maximum value. Now, because these spectra are related by a single factor omega n, it is possible to plot them on a combined spectrum, otherwise known as a tripartite spectrum. The horizontal axis corresponds to the natural period. The vertical axis corresponds to the pseudo-velocity, 
The positive diagonal axis corresponds to the displacement or deformation spectrum D. And the negative diagonal axis corresponds to the pseudo acceleration. Each of the curves you see here represent a different level of damping. The top curve corresponds to no damping. The second curve corresponds to a damping of 2%. The third curve corresponds to a damping of 5%, then 10%, and then finally 20%. Now reading from the spectrum is not so complicated as you might think at first. Let's say we want to find the corresponding D, V, and A values for a system with a natural period of 2 seconds and a damping value of 2%. We simply find two seconds on the horizontal axis, and we follow that until we intersect our curve for 2% damping. To find the value of D, we simply follow the line perpendicular to the D axis, and we find that it intersects at roughly 7.5. To find the value of V, we follow the line perpendicular to the vertical axis, we find a value of roughly 23.5 inches per second. And then finally, to obtain the pseudo acceleration, we follow the line perpendicular to the A axis. And we find a value of A equal to roughly 0.2 Gs. One thing to notice is that the curves will get shorter and flatter as damping increases. For your reference, here is the complete algorithm for generating the response spectrum, adapted from Chopra 6.6.5. First, you'll numerically define or obtain a ground acceleration record. And it's most common to see these with a sampling time of 0 0.02 seconds. Then you'll loop over a set of damping ratios of your choice. For each sampling ratio, you will loop over a set of natural periods of your choice. Typically, you want a resolution of at least 0.1 seconds, if not a little smaller. For each value of Tn and zeta, then you will compute the displacement response via some numerical method. Calculate the maximum of that response, and that will be your value of D. Then you will compute V and A based on the relationships to natural frequency or natural period, and simply store that value of D for the corresponding period and damping. Once you've looped over all damping ratio and natural period combinations, you'll simply plot D V and A versus Tn, and generate a new curve for each damping value. Now, assuming we've generated a response spectrum for a particular ground motion, or it's been provided to us, let's look at a, an example on how to apply this to an engineering problem. So the structure of interest for us is a 12-foot vertical cantilever steel pipe supporting 5,200 pounds of weight at the top. And the lateral stiffness calculated from the parameters of the steel pipe is 0.211 kips per inch. We are asked to determine the peak deformation and bending moment due to the L-central ground motion for which the spectrum has already been provided 
and we are to assume that the damping is 2%. That we know from before is the second line in the spectrum. Now typically this will be annotated, but in this case it is not in this figure. So now normally this will be already annotated on the figure. All right, so let's start with our structure. We've got our steel pipe. It's cantilevered. It's supporting a mass equal to the weight over gravity. It's got a stiffness of 0.211 and it's got a height which we'll call H equal to 12 feet. We should write our units as well. Alright, so we'll start by determining the natural frequency and then the natural period. Now we will use a value of G equal to 386 inches per second squared for the acceleration of gravity. And so omega n is equal to the root of k over m. This gives us a value of 3.96 radians per second. That means our natural period is 2 pi over omega n, and that is 1.59 seconds. All right, so we find 1.59 on our horizontal axis. We project that up to the 2% damping curve, and we get D from the positive diagonal axis. So that is approximately 5 inches. That implies that our Umax, our maximum deformation, is also 5 inches. And that's one of the values we were asked for. So that's done and out of the way. Then for the bending moment, we can remember that that is proportional to pseudo acceleration from the equivalent static force discussion. So we can find that on this axis, and I'm going to call that approximately 0.2 g's. Okay, so our maximum lateral force, F sub s, is equal to m times a, and our maximum base moment is equal to h times f of s and that will result in 150 kip inches. Keep in mind that f of s is also related to d through k which we also have so it is quite possible to also define f of s as a function of d and skip the computation of A altogether.